Welcome to America's Healer with Dr. Jason West. Dr. West and his guest experts are about to open your eyes to a whole new perspective on the medical world. Now, here is your host, world-renowned Dr. Jason West. Hello, hello, everyone. I'm Dr. West. Welcome so much to America's Healer on Voice America Radio. I've got a ton of great information and value to share with you on this radio segment. And it's just going to be fantastic because it's everything that so many healthcare providers tell patients that it's impossible to do. And this was specifically our topic is about rusty hinge arthritis. And and that literally, I, I like to take the knee joint as an example. The knee joint is a hinge joint. You know, you got your tibia on the bottom, you got your your femur on the top and, and you just have a hinge joint. And, and when that joint loses space and it's those bone surfaces start to touch each other, it hurts. And, and I literally say it's rusty hinge arthritis. That's what we're going to be talking about in this segment is what you can do about it, not only at home, but also some advanced cutting edge therapies that are really going to be life changing. And it's not just arthritis therapies. It's also the nerve system therapies. So let me kind of explain what that means. Nerve system therapies is sometimes your body can get a nerve memory where it says, I heard, I heard, I heard. It goes to the brain. And now we have this, literally this catch 22 cycle where it hurts because the nerves inflamed, the nerves inflamed because it hurts. And, it, and sometimes there's no reprogram for that. They don't even really think about this in traditional medicine. So our show is on rusty hinge arthritis. I also wanted to give some specific recognition and some shout outs for uh, people that make this show happen. Of course, I just wanted to recognize that my in-office assistant named Gina is so helpful in getting everything put together. I wanted to give Gina a big, big shout out and and tell her thanks for making everything happen in in the office. And of course, it's the whole office team that makes it happen. I have a, a wonderful medical director that's the world's greatest nurse practitioner named Shelby I have practice with a two-time Doctor of the Year award winner in Dr. Nelson, a team leader in Misty, a patient care coordinator in Jody, a doctor assistant in Tori, and the front desk of Betty and Tammy and Joyce, and, and, and everybody involved in the team process. I wanted to say thanks, and don't forget Jess helping out on the therapies. So uh, the team, thank you for making it happen. A lot of what I can share with people is the experiences in the office Like I've learned so many things in school to help people, but I've learned even more when people come in and they say, you know what, I have osteoarthritis, I have rheumatoid arthritis, I have um, psoriatic arthritis, autoimmune arthritis, and this is what I've learned. And and this is something that my dad taught me as a practicing physician. He said, you're going to learn a lot from school and you're going to learn even a lot more from patients. So I wanted to say a big shout out to my patient tribe at the West Clinic System in the little railroad town of Pocatello, Idaho. If you need us, you can pick us up on americashealer.com. It'll give you information about the clinic and the services that we offer. Not only do we help people in the office, we heal people across the street and across the country. So this program is specifically talking about the bone-on-bone touch arthritis. We call that osteoarthritis. And one of my uh, assistants, Jose, was saying, you know what, I th- when I think of arthritis, I think, oh, it's not that big a deal. Everybody has it. My grandmother has arthritis. Well, most people over 40 have arthritis. Arthritis means inflammation of the joint. But just so you guys know, like, it can be so debilitating uh, for people. And a lot of the traditional therapies and traditional things that people do are actually harmful. So a a couple things like that, you know, there's such things as comfort foods, you know, when we take a, when we're hurting or we feel off, we can go to comfort foods. Well, some of the comfort foods actually really, really aggravate arthritis or that inflammation in the joint. Um, Those are sweets, specifically this wonderful tasting, but horrible thing that ruins our health on 40, 140 different ways. And that is refined sugar is so hard on healthcare conditions, but it's particularly inflammatory for joints. So a lot of times when people say, hey, what is the first thing I can do with osteoarthritis? So this is the wearing out, the bone-on-bone, the rusty hinge arthritis. 
is let's really work on inflammation. And we're going to talk some advanced inflammation you know, later on in the show. We also want to tell everybody, look, if you want the, I put together a free ebook for my listeners, for my patients. It's the arthritis cure that you can get at americashealer.com. It's a free ebook that summarizes literally everything that I'm talking about. So I get, you know, one of the things that the network producer told me in, in a critique of our first show is she said, hey, you should slow down a little bit. And I said, well, I get going fast because I get nervous. And then I want to make sure that everybody gets value. So I'm dumping, 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 saying all these different things on, on the radio show because I want to make sure that it's worth your while to listen to. And she said, you need to slow down just a little bit and make sure that we can't even write everything down. So I wrote a book for you. Everything that I'm talking about, you can get as a free ebook on voice, um, excuse me, on americashealer.com. You can go there. There's also a free evaluation that we have there that we can really help to build you out a customized supplement formulation. And the reason why I decided to put that together is because you are what you eat and you are what you absorb. And we can take the best things, the best extracts, and the best little minute things out of foods, and we can put them into a concentrated uh, delivery system, and it can really, really help your quality of life. It can help your flexibility. It can help your range of motion. And I don't believe the, I believe this is a medical inaccuracy that once you have bone on bone arthritis, there's no options for you other than pain control and surgery. I don't believe that. And so one of the things we put together is a customized program that you can, you can get that has acetylmerostolate in it. It has long chain fatty acids. It has glucosamine, curumeric, curcumin, uh, turmeric, uh, boswellia. It has all the things that I talk about that are so good for joints. We can put that in together into a, a custom program for you if you need it. Now, you can get these things in many different places. Just make sure that they're quality, uh, quality nutritional therapy, quality medical nutritional therapy literally can reverse so many different health problems and health conditions. You know, it, balanced people don't get sick. Balanced people don't get symptoms. When you get a symptom, whether it's arthritis or stomach problems or a headache or skin conditions, it's a sign of the body is imbalanced and we want to put everything back in balance. And so we can use these nutritional therapies. It's, it's so healthy for you to get the right things in your system. And I believe that if you slowly get away from optimal, you put the balances back into the body, you can go back towards optimal and you can resolve a lot of different healthcare conditions. So let's get right into our topic on rusty hinge arthritis. This is something that I kind of came up with in the office. That's with, you know, when the joint, it, it just runs out of space. It's overuse. You see this in a lot of repetitive stress injuries. You know, you can get carpal tunnel syndrome, which is an inflammation of the bones in the wrist that closes down the space where the arteries, nerves, and tendons go into the wrist. And, and it's a, typically an overuse injury. Uh, plantar fasciitis is another thing on, on your foot when people are like, you know what, I get up in the morning and it is agony. I have to get my foot, foot limbered up so that I can take, you know, steps. And, well, it's where that ligament, the spring ligament, is attaching to the heel, and the ligament's a little bit stronger than the bone, so it pulls that bone away. It's almost like a little avulsion fracture. And that, uh, that membrane about, around the bone, the periosteum, is hooked up to all those Sharpie fibers and pain fibers. And so it's literally like walking on a stress fracture in the morning. Well, if we can strengthen the bone and help the ligament to be healthy and to flexible, you can treat plantar fasciitis. You can help carpal tunnel. You can help all these things. Okay, so let's start going into arthritis and review what it is. So arth is the joint. Itis is inflammation. It affects so many different people. Most everyone after 40 has some type of arthritis. And invariably, when I say that, there's going to be one of those outliers that says, you know, I'm, I'm over 40 and I feel fine. Well, one of my first things that I'd say to them is, well, are you as tall as you used to be? And the reason I ask that is because in between the vertebrae in your back is this part, piece of connective tissue 
called the invertebral disc. And it's like a jelly-filled donut with you have the soft inner center called the nucleus propulsus. You have this, this strong outer layer called the annular fibrosis. And, and literally, that's what it's like. Well, we lose water space out of this. We call this hysteresis. And it makes you to be less tall. That's a sign of arthritis. So even though you may not have arthritis symptoms, there's some arthritis findings that we can have. And when you wear out those joints, it, it hurts. So I'm going to pick on, you know, the knee because it's one of the most classic things that I see inside of the office where people are saying, hey, my knees hurt. It hurts to go upstairs. It hurts to go downstairs. It hurts to do an incline. It hurts to sit for a time period. Sometimes people will go and they will get a anti-inflammatory shot, you know, a cortisone or a prednisone application, which is fascinating to me because what the medical world is trying to do is to remove inflammation out of the body so that the body can heal. And so I've teased a couple of my medical friends, hey, you're more uh, alternative and functional medicine than I am. You're just buying time for the body to heal. And, and we've kind of had some funny discussions about that. It also has some unwanted side effects. You can't just keep putting cortisone into a joint without having some difficulties. We, we know it's really hard on cartilage. We know it can be really difficult on bones. And that's why a continual application of cortisone to a bone-on-bone -bone arthritis is not a long-term plan. And so sometimes it'll help people and take away the symptoms for a time period. And I usually tell them, look, I'm not anti-medicine at all. I'm for whatever help and helps the patients. But sometimes when we have repeated applications of too strong of medicine, uh, bad things uh, can happen. And, and when you take away the pain, what happens, we also take away some of the proprioception of the joint, which means you, sometimes you can get some unusual wear and tear. In my experience, a lot of times with cortisone is people will say, you know, I got the first shot and helped, you know, six or eight months or a year. The second shot helped three months. The third shot helped, you know, a week. The fourth shot didn't help. And so I see a lot of people at that spectrum saying, I don't have uh, options for repeated cortisone injections. I'm not quite ready for a joint replacement surgery. What are my options? And so I really want to talk about what some of the options are. For, for example, one of the, the neat things that I tell people is we've got to get some building blocks into the system. And no, it's not reasonable to say, you, you know, at 40, if you're having knee pain and we give you this protocol that you're going to get 18-year-old knees. Uh, and, I, and I jokingly tell patients in the office, I'm really good, but I'm not that good. Like, I can't reverse the age train, but can we get more shock absorbers than you currently have? I, I've seen that. I've seen it not only in patients and in what they're telling me, but also we're seeing it when patients are, you go onto a protocol, and uh, I have some before and after x-rays where there appears to be more joint space and less symptoms. So I'm excited to tell people, those protocols. So let's start talking about those and some of the most common things. One of the things everybody mentions when they come in is, you know, what should I be taking chondroitin or glucosamine? And and we've it's got a lot of of I guess say uh, awareness on the on the internet. A lot, almost everybody says I've got it, and I tried chondroitin. And my experience with chondroitin is it's not as effective as some other things. So if you're taking glucosamine and chondroitin. Sometimes the glucosamine works. It just takes a little bit of time. It was my understanding that the difficulty with chondroitin, it was hard to get the molecule size into the joint area. That's why it's, uh, they don't see a ton of benefits from just chondroitin. Glucosamine is a smaller molecule that gets in there. And by the way, my assistant just reminded me, if there are arthritis questions that you have, and of course, as we go through the program, we're just talking about arthritis initially. We're going to be talking about stomach health. We're going to be talking about natural con considerations for blood pressure and for headaches. But we do have a call-in number where you can call our producer, Andrew, and get on the show, ask questions at 866-472-5792. If, if you have questions, now obviously our topic is about arthritis, we're able to and take some time and go over your questions. What we were talking about, if you're just joining us, is arthritis, and particularly osteoarthritis, or what we call bone-on-bone -bone arthritis, 
and everybody asking, what can I do for that? Um, frequently, people ask about what natural things to take. So a lot of times people say chondroitin sulfate or glucosamine. Is that helpful? I also wanted to t- talk about some other things. I see some really nice benefit from collagen peptides. So what peptides are, are they're literally short segments of amino acids that code for protein. So we have amino acids, and then we have peptides, and then we have proteins. And what peptides do is they help to organize the amino acids into, I believe, repair building blocks. And, and collagen is a really nice connective tissue. It helps with, with joints. It helps with ligaments. Uh, for the ladies out there, I think there's some collagen peptides considerations for anti-aging and wrinkle reduction, but I see a really nice place for this in osteoarthritis. Other things that I really like to see is a combination of essential fatty acids. You know, I think fatty acids have a wonderful health application as, you know, protecting the nerves, lubricating the organ system, giving building blocks for hormones, which are chemical messengers that allow it to talk to themselves. And if you take the right combination of essential fatty acids, not only does it help with cardiac health prevention, it helps with circulation, it helps with lubrication on your tendons, but it also really, really helps, really helps with joint conditions. But it can't just be fish oil. You got to do a combination of fish oil and EPA and DHEA and evening primrose oil and avocado oil. Like when you combine the oils into one formula, what happens is you get a synergistic and beneficial effect. And then when you add it to an enzyme formula, we'll go over this after the upcoming break. It can you can have a wonderful anti-inflammatory, uh, pain-reducing quality, and you don't have to resort to over-the-counter medicines which over-the-counter medicines, I'm all for not living with pain, but they're not exactly benign either. You know, some of those over-the-counter medicines are really hard on the kidneys. Sometimes they're really hard on the stomach. Sometimes they're really hard on the liver. They're to be designed to be literally a short-term applications. And sometimes people will come in and say, look, the only way I can manage my shoulder pain or my back pain is I take 8 or 12 ibuprofen or a leave or a, a acetaminophen and to help reduce the pain i'm just trying to have a better quality of life so we want to talk a little bit about the unintentional effects of so, some of those medicines and what maybe we can possibly do for uh, avoiding a joint surgery i'm not opposed to surgery unless uh, we haven't exhausted everything else i think there's a really nice place for it once again you guys are listening to america's healer on Voice America Radio, and of course, we're syndicated through Apple, Spotify, Pandora, uh, Google Voice, uh, and Twitch, almost on every platform. We're getting ready to go into our break. I'm excited to tell you guys what we can do after the break at Home Therapies for Rusty Hinge Arthritis. Also wanted to talk about the cutting-edge treatments that most doctors don't worry about, know about, and most important, how we can rewire the nerves so we don't have chronic nerve pain. I think uh, phantom limb syndrome, without the amputation, I'm going to explain that more. After the break, I'm so excited to be on my second show on America's Healer Arthritis coming at you from a wonderful little railroad town in Pocatello, Idaho. And Andrew, we're ready. When you're ready to take us to the break, then we're going to be able to do a bunch of neat stuff after the break. I'm Dr. Jason West. Stay tuned for the breakthrough in our second segment. You're listening to America's Healer with Dr. Jason West. If you have a question for Dr. West or his guests, feel free to join us on the show at 866-472-5792. That's 866-472-5792. Now, back to the show. All right, you guys, we're coming back into our second segment. What we're talking about is rusty hinge arthritis. That's a term that I've come up with in the office to talk about what happens with bone-on-bone arthritis. It typically happens to the knees, to the hips, to the shoulders, and, and the low back. In the low back, we call that degenerative joint disease. 
I'm excited that we have a caller on the line that we're going to pick up in just a minute. I also wanted to give uh, some other recognition for people that have helped make this show possible. And the reason why I do that is I've been to certain conferences and events where um, doctors have gone and said, I've come up with this new breakthrough and I've come up with this. And, and part of me is like, you know, I've kind of heard that before. It's a little bit different twist. And I've always been committed to recognizing people that have, have helped the show and, and have taught me some different things. So I wanted to give a special shout out to the West Clinic. And, and that's where I'm in private practice. And we work with helping people beat their disease every day and also our nutritional supplement supplier. It's something I've been able to help with our customized formulations and building out things that I know are working for people. And in particular, I wanted to give a shout out to one of the most important teachers in my pathway and in my life, and that is uh, Ryan Darrow. Ryan, I just wanted to give you thanks for all of the many times that you've taught me about uh, glucosamine, you've taught me about CMO, you've taught me about collagen peptides, and you've taught me about uh, uh, modulations, inflammatories, and anyway, thank you so much. You've been a huge part of my career and my show. Okay, so we have a caller on the line that I'm excited to go over, and, uh, and let's bring him on, and let's go over what questions you have on arthritis. All right, we have Jason on with us. Yes. Yeah. Well, hey, welcome to the show. What uh, what questions can we go over? Uh, thanks. Uh, well, I was kind of on hold. I kind of answered my question. All right. I went to your website and got the free ebook. So thanks for that. For a very, very long time, I've suffered from back issues. And I've been, uh, you know, early on, MRIs, bone scans, every, you know, all the different tests. And then found a chiropractor that was very helpful for me. And I almost feel like that I became a an addict of ibuprofen and yet I started researching on it and it's not good for me. And you answered a little bit. Would you answer me a little bit more what specifically maybe I could be doing to help with lower back pain? And in particular, um, I believe I have ankylating, ankylating spondylitis. I don't say that very well. Um, and I know that's an arthritis. You mentioned it in the, in the show last week when I listened, and I keep waiting for you to say a little bit about that. Okay, so Jason, a couple things. Number one, um, it, we all struggle with terminology. You know, d doctors invent this big word combinations that uh, you have to promise to use big words. They don't give you a, d a degree, but it's ankylosing spondylitis, and it's a type of arthritis where literally your ligaments start to harden. And, uh, and so you want to, uh, one of the first things you said, what can I do for back pain? My number one recommendation is to keep moving. I think that's so important for arthritis in general, but specifically for this, you want to keep moving. So you want to be active, find a hobby or an exercise that you enjoy that keeps you moving. And it doesn't always have to be going to the gym. You know, uh, an example of this is I'm, you're never going to find me running in a marathon or running on the side of the road. I, I don't really like that process. I love to play basketball. I love to do chores. I love to ride dirt bikes or, or snow bikes. I love to uh, get on an elliptical in the morning and listen to a book. And my point is, is find something that you like and do that. That's number one. The second thing is with um, ankylosing spondylitis where the ligaments are starting to a massage therapy, chiropractic therapy, physical therapy, um, yoga, all of those different things to help the joints move. Like if, the, if you stop moving, uh, bad things are going to happen. And then taking it one step further, you know, with ibuprofen, there is, we know that there's a higher risk of a heart attack or a stroke with these medications. Um, particularly, it really can be hard on your stomach and we recognize like no one wants these unwanted side effects, but what happens is it can just be really difficult also on, you know, your moods and emotions because it can interfere with, you know, some of your neurotransmitters, uh, heartburn. Sometimes people will, will literally have a, you know, throw up or sometimes they can have what looks like coffee grounds in their stool and stuff because it's interfering in that COX-2 pathway. And so, 
I tell people, look, use it when you absolutely need to, but let's talk also about some options and considerations. So for your question, number one, it was, um, you know, what can I, what can I do instead of ibuprofen? So the first recommendations that I would do for that is this little known thing. No one ever talks about it. And of course I say this facetiously, but I've seen really good pain relief with vitamin D3. I really see good outcomes with that when it's consistent and I like it to be, for me, I have some knee pain from an old motorcycle accident that I seem to control it pretty well for about 5,000 units a day of vitamin D. That's what I use for my knee. Now, everybody's a little bit different. I think it's important to get a blood workup and to have a, uh, a vitamin D levels to see where you are. That's number one. I also really like magnesium. Magnesium is a cofactor for 300 enzyme, enzyme reactions. I like, uh, you know, magnesium citrate or magnesium glycine, even magnesium malate are really effective um, for all of those androgen reactions. I see good outcomes from that. But my favorite protocol is this, is when you combine essential fatty acids, your small, medium, and large chain fatty acids, and then you add a proteolytic enzyme, it literally acts like a Pac-Man and it helps to chew up pain. And I wanted to give props to the doctor that taught me this, a, a wonderful healer named John Jones, who is a medical doctor that has an amazing repertoire of nutritional knowledge. He also got a master's degree in public health, and he was running the occupational medical program in my town 20 years ago, and people were going in with on-the-job injuries, and they were going in, they weren't expecting some type of traditional you know, pain or anti-inflammatory, and he was giving them this medicine. And, uh, and I was like, well, who in the emergency room in the hospital is giving you know, nutritional therapy. Well, he was just way ahead of his time. He taught me that protocol. A proteolytic enzyme is something that helps to break down protein. Natural sources of it are pineapple and papaya. You can get them in a lot of different supplements. Like one of the things that we have available in our office for something that for as an inflammatory indicator, is something called whip. And then literally it helps to chew up the, those, uh, inflammatory molecules. It's like a little, little Pac-Man. Now this protocol, Jason, doesn't work very fast. It's not like you can take it and then 30 minutes later, you're going to be out of pain. It has to build up for three or four days. And my concern is when people come in and say, I have arthritis and they're taking ibuprofen and we have, you know, deprival, uh, uh, naproxen, et cetera, is the undesired, unwanted effects of taking those NSAIDs. And so this is one of the first recommendations. By the way, I think there's also a really nice play for some pain relieving creams. You know, I like something called tea relief and there's a, a herbal cream called Sombra. It's really good. There's a wonderful homeopathic called Tromiel that are external applications that I think are really effective. And so ankylosing spondylitis, number one, keep moving. Number two, keep moving. And number three, of course, keep moving. So uh, you're going to think I'm joking when I say you need a massage, you need some chiropractic or physical therapy consistently in your life. Move, move, move. And then let's work on your inflammatory processes by getting a good essential fatty acid, a combination of those, and a proteolytic enzyme. Um, Jason, you can get more information. Thanks for getting the free report over on um, americashealer.com. And you can get, I have a whole bunch of information on arthritis on the website. Voice America, excuse me, America's Healer will take you to our website. We also have Danny on the line. So Danny, thanks so much for calling the show. What questions can we go over for you? Doctor, you, you touched on it briefly in your uh, answer to the last caller. But my question is, how helpful can chiropractic adjustments be, especially when the joints are, are hurting because of arthritis? So the really good question, and the answer is, uh, I would say somewhat trial and error. Now, as a healthcare provider, I have a, I have a doctorate as a chiropractor. I have a second doctorate as a naturopathic doctor. I've got advanced, degree, advanced certifications in, in nutritional therapy and acupuncture and, and oxidative medicine. And, and, uh, and what that means is when people come into the office, one of the things that we want to do is we want to help put the body back in balance. So if there's a misalignment, it can either, you know, pinch the nerves and bother the nerve system. It can get, there can be uneven wear and tear on the joint. And so when we can get things improved and lined up, it, I found a lot of arthritis improves. And of course, there are some people that if you 
move that joint, it can hurt them. You know, rheumatoid arthritis is an example of that, advanced osteoarthritis. And in that case, Danny, what I would use is I would start, I would move to a little bit more uh, non-adjustive therapy. So there's a way to help reprogram the joints with using electrical therapy, interferential, Russian stem, sign surge. It helps to rewire the nerves, which you're going to lead me right into my next segment of how to help the nerves. Number two, I think uh, therapeutic ultrasound is a really nice thing uh, for joints. And literally what we're doing is we're taking sound waves and we're vibrating the cells. So it's like a, a cellular massage for advanced osteoarthritis or osteoarthritis that hurts when getting adjusted. And that would be one of my things I do in the office is well, let's do a really gentle manipulation procedure and let's see how the patient responds. If it helps, I'm going to put them on a nutritional uh, building program. I'm going to help them with pain, with essential fatty acids and enzymes, but I also use collagen peptides. I'm going to use manganese that helps with the ligaments. And then we're going to help rewire the nerves. And so you can kind of do that with electrical stimulation or magnet or laser therapy. But I think one of the things that hardly any doctors talks about or knows about is an advanced German therapy called neural therapy. You know, neural therapy was literally discovered in about 1920 by a father-son combination, Matthias Doach. It's written about in a book called The Manual of Neural Therapy. And it's one of the most important medical books I've ever read. Now, before anybody goes and runs over to Amazon and buy it, which you're totally welcome to do, it is some heavy lifting. I mean, there is a lot. Like, I had to read it with a Dorland's Medical Dictionary, and I couldn't read it for fun. I had to read it for work. Like I was going to read it and I was going to like uh, put the time in. But here's what, here's what neural therapy does. It's based upon using electricity, physics, and the nervous system to help arthritis instead of just trying to work on the bones. It's very popular in Germany. There's a, a whole different uh, flavor to it in France. It's got a little bit of traction here. Uh, called neural therapy. So here's the basis for neural therapy and how we can help arthritis by helping change the perception of pain to the central nervous system and to the brain and so that you don't have these chronic pain patterns. So here's how this uh, therapy works. So many times in healthcare we get a nerve memory and the nerve memory is telling the literally the nervous system, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt. It can happen after an infection. Like sometimes people will get shingles. And then what happens is the shingles, they'll go away. So you have these little pustules that come out. Then the pustules break open. You get these little scabs. Then the scabs go away. The, the immune system has responded. It's gone after that virus. And then what happens in some people, unfortunately, is the nervous system still is hurting. We call that post-herpetic neuralgia, and it can be absolutely miserable. Like when people get shingles, that's the number one goal is to make sure that they don't get post-herpetic neuralgia. And then number one A is like, let's help the immune system to respond faster. It happens sometimes with people in traumatic injuries, like I'll have a rodeo or rancher guy come into the office and he'll get a rope caught around his finger. You know, I mean, he'll be practicing roping, and then the cow will take off, and he'll pull their finger off, and they'll come into the office, and they'll say, Dr. West, my finger is killing me. It's not even attached to the body. So what's happened is we've injured the nervous system. We've had a, what's called a neural praxis-type injury. It's hurt the nerve, and the body parts in there. Sometimes it help, happens with phantom gallbladder syndrome. It happens with phantom limb syndrome, you know, with an amputation if someone had an, a workplace injury or, or something like that, or, or in the nervous system gets really irritated and it's telling your brain, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt. Well, what this neural therapy does is it helps to reboot the system. And what I mean reboot, it's just like taking a computer and turning everything off and turning it back on, except we can do that physiologically for the body. And it's so important to do in chronic arthritis conditions, particularly with the knees and the shoulder and the hips. It's just the, it's just a breakthrough. And I was lucky to run into it a couple years ago, uh, more than that, 2004. So um, let's see, 19 years ago, I was able to run to it. I got taught by a master in it, to uh, uh, Dr. Jeff Harris, I wanted to give a shout out to him. It absolutely changed my life and changed my um, way to help people. 
by getting the nerves to reboot. So if you are listening on this, the radio, we are doing a video playback for this. I can kind of show you, uh, but literally what happens, I'm taking my hands here. You want to put your hands straight up. That's like opening the nerves and you put your hands straight down, uh, closing the nerves and then put your hands straight across. That's literally getting the nerves to reposition or, or recalibrate. So we call it hyperpolarization, depolarization, repolarization of that area. And a lot of times when you start people on an arthritis protocol, you get them on the essential fatty acids, you get them on a proteolytic enzyme, and you can do some regenerative injection therapy, or you can do some acupuncture considerations. You can do prolotherapy or neural prolotherapy or platelet-rich plasma therapy or PAF therapy or stem cell therapy, like any of these therapies. And if people don't respond, it's sometimes it's because of the nerves. And we have to remember that how your body is created is you get genetic information from your mom, genetic information from your dad. It comes together. The spark of life happens. We get that fertilized cell literally that starts to expand. And then it rolls in on each other. And, and we start to develop a, nerve, a nervous system. And we get those stem cells that can differentiate into any cells. Well, the reason I say that is because the brain, the nerves, and the skin all come from the same developmental layer And so if you treat the skin over the joint or over the organ system, the same nerve that goes to the skin or the joint goes through those muscles, it goes through those organs to the central nervous system, to the brain. So we can have this wonderful reprogramming effect on chronic pain conditions and arthritis by working on the outside of the the skin area over the joints to help reprogram the nerve control to the brain. We call that neural therapy. So that's one of those treatments that not very many doctors practice. They don't even know about, but you can help the nerves. You can help the joints. And we're also going to be talking about advanced regenerative injection therapy. So I wanted to give a shout out to Jason for calling or Danny for calling. If you want to call, remember it's 866-472-5792. This segment, we're talking about arthritis But the show is about literally everything that's wrong with people. I've got experts lined up. They're coming in the next couple of weeks on cardiology and on Lyme disease. We're talking about what we can do for surgical prep or biologic dentistry. And I've got a doctorate of physical therapy that that we want to talk about movement patterns and how to reprogram things. So I'm Dr. Jason West with America's Healer. We're heading into the break. We're going to be talking about exactly what you can do at home, supplements that work, advanced regenerative injection therapy, in the next segment. So stay tuned. I can't wait to share with you more things that are helping people to beat arthritis. You're listening to America's Healer with Dr. Jason West. If you have a question for Dr. West or his guests, feel free to join us on the show at 866-472-5792. That's 866-472-5792. Now, back to the show. All right, you guys, we've been talking about rusty hinge arthritis, also known as osteoarthritis. And osteoarthritis is commonly bone-on-bone arthritis and where it usually affects people. Now, the number one way to get osteoarthritis is to literally get some type of trauma, a, a ligament injury in your knee, a rotator cuff injury in your shoulder, a car accident, a slip and fall. Uh, unfortunately for moms out there, sometimes in the pelvis and stuff like that, it's from delivering babies and other things, anything that literally makes those ligaments stretch and contract and other things. Uh, chronic sprained ankles is another one. So that's kind of sets the ground stage for arthritis. And then there's this other thing that is undefeated, and this is called father time. And so as we matriculate through life, we don't have as much joint spaces as we used to. So it'll come closer to closer in the knees or in the hips, or it can cause degenerative joint disease in the back and in the neck, or what I should say is degenerative joint disease causes the arthritis. So we're talking about a couple different pathways forward. Number one is what we can do at home, which I want to touch about Uh, in this final segment. Also, I want to get really detailed in in some of the recommendations and medical nutritional therapy that you can do to help with connective tissue, to help with the the joints, and to help with pain modulation. We talked a little bit about 
what we can do to help rewire the impulses into the, into the brain. So when I talk about rewiring impulses, a lot of times when some area starts to hurt, the body can think that that is normal and it's not normal to hurt all the time. It, I don't believe that we're designed uh, to be in pain. And sometimes what happens is there'll be all of this focus on the joint surfaces and on the joints itself, and we forget the electrical electrician that goes to that area. And so remember when things, when our nervous system tells our muscles how to leverage and how to move that joint, and then we get feedback from the muscles and we get feedback from the joint to the nervous system, and that's how we balance, that's how we walk, that's how we lift things. And a lot of times the nervous system is neglected. So in the last segment, we talked about an advanced German technique called neural therapy, where you can get the nerves to open and to close and to reset. So we want to reset that nerve therapy. And by the way, here's exactly how the procedure is done. I forgot to mention this. And, and you can look on my YouTube channel. You can go to my website. And, we, and, and I've got a lot of information on neural therapy. It's N-E-U-R-A-L, neural therapy. And so what we want to do with neural therapy is it's a way to help treat the nervous system. So you take a little syringe, you take a glycolyzed ester of paraminobenzoic acid, so it's a derivative of a B vitamin. And what it does is it makes those nerve endings open, close, and reset. So the way that you use it, you do these little tiny, little tiny injections with a, with a small dental needle over the areas that are problematic. So one of our callers is saying, hey, I have low back problems, uh, possibly from a condition called ankylosing spondylitis. Like this would be one of the things where you could do those little injections over the back. Or if people are having difficulties with shoulders, so chronic shoulder pain, chronic knee pain, chronic hip pain, it's kind of like a, an advanced application of acupuncture, except you're using nutritional therapy uh, to do that. So that's a really neat way to reset the nerves. I wanted to talk about in this segment some things you can do at home, some takeaways. Also, wanted to talk about uh, various kinds of regenerative injection therapy and then set the table for next week. Now, next week, we're going to be talking about autoimmune arthritis. Now, that's a little bit different than osteoarthritis. This is more with the ankylosing spondylitis. It's Rogen's disease. It's rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, I think there's some big applications for fibromyalgia, mixed connective tissue disease, and polymyalgia polymyalgia rheumatica, PMR. So those different things can be part of the immune system not calibrated right. And I don't want to spoil next week's show, but I'm not convinced that those are actually autoimmune disorders. And you'll have to stay tuned for the show of why I think that. And then it's not just me saying it. Like I have patients that literally have had these conditions and they're no longer there. They're not picking them up as a rheumatoid factor in the blood. And, and some of their other markers are changing, and, and uh, we're going to have them on the show as we move throughout out the year. So coming back and talking about arthritis, here's some things that are really important. Number one, for osteoarthritis, you got to move. And number two, water, water, water is so important. It's so underrated as a health treatment or a modality. It, it really is effective. And I have, unfortunately, I have some people that – lived in some low groundwater areas or grew up in, a, in an environment where they didn't really have water. It was always some type of drink or soda or anything at meals, and, and they don't like water. And water is like, the, is, it's like oil for the Tin Man on the Wizard of Oz. And I just we really like to push that. If people don't like water, then like put you know, some lemon or lime or some fruits or cucumbers or something in the water and try and give it a little bit of flavor and be really careful with acid intake. I talked about this last week. People are saying, well, why would I do I don't have acid. Well, when you boil or you put carbon dioxide through a solution that has some type of sugar in it, we make carbonic acid and ta-da, that is soda pop. We have an acid stomach. We put acid in our stomach. It's over acid. Biology and nature has to balance out. What do we do? We take um, minerals and stuff from the muscles and the skin and the joints and everywhere else in the body to try and help balance out what's happening in the stomach. And I think it throws everything off into a state of imbalance. Now, no one wants to get a lecture in the principal's office or 
or a, a, your ecclesiastical leader, your priest, your bishop, etc. So I'm going to get off of the lecturing and talk about, okay, what foods can you eat that are, are healthy? And so everything that is I, like a natural foods diet, so some green, some yellow, some white in your diet, I really like specific vegetables. Now, I've seen some good outcomes. One of my patients told me that if they ate hot things, so peppers, onion, garlic, cilantro, that really help with arthritis, I've seen pretty good feedback through the years for that. Now, you want to be careful that we don't have, you know, the wrong combination of those. When I say wrong combination, I'm specifically thinking about different cultural foods that are hot and then pounding it down with an ice cold Pepsi or Mountain Dew or Coca or something like that, like that kind of defeats the purpose. But colorful foods are one of the best things to eat. I really like raw nuts. I think raw nuts are so helpful for um, inflammation as long as you're not food sensitive to, to nuts, but like walnuts in particular. And the, one of the best things you can do for hand arthritis is to eat raw pecans. And what raw pecans do is it helps to decrease the likelihood of formation of those little nodules on your fingers called Heberding's nodes. Um, that's what uh, pecans, in my experience, I've, I taught this by my dad in practice years ago, that pecans are one of the best things that you can do for hand arthritis. Okay, so we talked some things about pain control for arthritis, vitamin D, you know, I take about 5,000 units all the time. In the wintertime, I take even more, or 10,000. Uh, magnesium is really helpful as a coenzyme, and it helps to really get so many energy processes working. And I think arthritis is literally an energy deficiency disease of the joint. Um, one of my favorite things to tell people about is something called CMO. Now, what CMO is, is it's called acetylmerostoliate. And if you look, there's two places, like there's lots of places to get it, but two places that I really recommend. Number one, there is a product that I use in our office all the time for arthritis called Joint Revive. I have two products, Joint Revive and Joint Freedom. They have the collagen peptides. They have a glucosamine. They have sulfur, hyaluronic acid, copper, vitamin C, boswellia, turmeric, um, that I love to give people as a natural anti-pain thing, but I don't want to give natural, or excuse me, I don't want to give over-the-counter medicines because I think that they have some deleterious long-term effects. So you can see that on America's Healer is where I've got uh, some information. I got a free ebook over there. Inside of the ebook, we talk about where you can get these. That's one thing that I really recommend for people. I've also seen some, funny enough, I've seen some benefit for joint pain in taking the spice cinnamon. Now, typically we use cinnamon for blood sugar regulation. I, I've done a whole bunch of little segment short videos on cinnamon and parasites. So I wanted to uh, you know, give a shout out for that. But there's some nice pain relieving properties in cinnamon. Another food that I've seen some reasonable outcomes with in with arthritis is, is radishes. I've seen some uh, people that have done, responded really well to radishes. And then also this wonderful, another anti-parasitic thing that has acetic acid in it. It has some uh, turmeric in it. It's really good for leg cramps and restless leg syndrome. And it's yellow mustard. And you can get this in a mustard seed, you know, pill form. That's probably the way that I would take it. I don't, dislike mustard. I'm just not a big fan of mustard, but I've had people say, look, I just fill up literally a, a teaspoon full of yellow mustard and it's been really helpful for their joint considerations. Now, I've not mentioned a whole bunch of these different natural things that you can do. You can pick them up all over the place at health food stores. You, you can pick them up um, online. It, there's one thing that we did is we put everything in place in one formula, which is our joint program that we can put it all into one bottle. So if you need a source that's available at voice, excuse me, I keep getting this confused. It's av available at americashealer.com. And I put it all together so you have one bottle instead of 20. All right, so we got to cover some things really quick. I've got three minutes left. I just wanted to talk about some regenerative injection therapy. So regenerative injection therapy, there's multiple different kinds there's a you know, prolotherapy where they're injecting 
a sugar solution in and around the joints to cause the body to have a reaction and go into healing mode. My favorite way to help people is to do an amazing therapy pioneered by a phenomenal healer in uh, Carson City, Nevada, named Dr. Schallenberger, where you use proliferative therapy using oxidative medicine. It's a combination of oxygen and ozone therapy. And you put in a vitamin solution in and around the joints, followed up by this oxygen ozone combination. And I've seen it literally create fantastic medical miracles for people. You can see the many, like I have hundreds of testimonials on our YouTube channel, which is Healthy Healing TV. It's on our website in our success blog. It's uh, talked about a lot in our ebook that's available for free at americashealer.com. So to summarize, we've been talking about bone-on-bone arthritis. There's lots of ways to help it. Essential fatty acids and proteolytic enzymes, acetylmerostoliate are good places to start. Collagen peptides are good. Hot foods, peppers, onions have some relief. I like cinnamon, and I partake out of all of them. I really, really like uh, CMO is my favorite thing. How to help the body the best. You want to reprogram the nerves by literally doing something called neural therapy. I think that's such an important part of the treatment. And you can use some advanced regenerative injection therapy using prolozone or prolotherapy. I've got it all outlined in my book, The Arthritis Cure, available on americashealer.com. Next week, we are going to be talking about autoimmune arthritis, that whole family of spectrums, and why I challenge the medical notion that it's your body attacking itself. I don't think that. I don't think you're attacking yourself. I actually think that the body gets tricked to do it, and there's a specific trigger, and I've got a lot of really cool patient experience to tell you that. I'm Dr. Jason West with America's Healer. We're with you every Friday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Mountain Time. That's my time zone. We've got some guests that are coming up. I, I want to have an autoimmune expert on next week. I've got a cardiologist that said he would like to do something. I have a women's health specialist, a physical therapist, doctor of physical therapy, all coming into the program. And, of course, you can reach out to us. You can pick this up on Spotify, Pandora, um, Amazon Talk. There's so many different platforms available. And you can see the video replay on YouTube and also on our website. I'm Dr. Jason West with America's Healer Radio. I'm so excited to be doing this segment. I'll see you guys next week on autoimmune arthritis. And you can pick up your free ebook at americashealer.com. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. America's Healer, Dr. Jason West, will be back next week to share more of his expertise. So don't miss it. Until then, have a great week.